everybody. Chapter 10, Principality of Fear. Definition. First, let's define fear. Satan is the master counterfeiter. He will always take what God has meant for good and distort it for his purposes. The dictionary defines fear as the emotion of being afraid, of feeling danger, or that evil is near, an uneasy or anxious thought. Synonyms are dread or alarm. Dread is defined as a great fear. Fear can warn us of danger so that we can protect, protect ourselves if we are standing next to a cliff. It warns us to be careful. In times of danger, fear also creates a flight, fight response in our bodies. This flight, fight response causes the adrenal glands to secrete large amounts of adrenaline which causes several different physiological responses in our bodies. The primary one is an increase in strength to protect us. But many live in a constant state of flight fight as they think about the things that have happened to them. The over secretion of adrenaline and cortisol will destroy your immune system and the calcium in your bones. Scripture teaches us that we are to fear God. This does not mean that we are to be afraid of Him. The Hebrew word used for this kind of fear is Yara. Strong's 3374. It means to have reverence for God. He is the giver of every good and perfect gift. But all too many of us are afraid of Him. The Hebrew root word for this kind of fear is yer, Strong's 3372. It means cause to be frightened, to make afraid or dread. God the Father is love. In Matthew 2237, Jesus said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. We are to love God the Father, not be afraid of Him. God is the only one that loves each of us perfectly. The Greek word delios, dielos, it's D-E-I-L-O-S, translated fear in the New Testament means to dread, timid, Ex example by implication, it means faithful, faithless or fearful. Fear is equated with being faithless. Matthew 8, verse 26, Mark 4, verse 40, and 2, 2 Timothy 1, verse 7, and Revelation 21, verse 8. Matthew 8, verse 26 illustrates this meaning. And he saith unto them, Why are ye fearful? O ye of little faith. Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. Mark 4 verse 40 says, And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? Scripture records records four occurrences of little or no faith. One, concerning necessities of life. Matthew 6, verse 30. 2. Concerning danger. Matthew 8, verse 26. 3. Concerning working miracles. Matthew 14, verse 31. And 4. Concerning food. Matthew 16, verse 6 to 12. In this chapter, we will establish the fact that this kind of fear is a sin and learn how to defeat it. We will see what fear has done and is doing to us and how it functions. Being afraid, uneasy, or anxious and having great fear can cause extreme problems spiritually, physically, and mentally. Psalms 56 verse 11 says, In God have I put my trust. 
I will not be afraid what man can do unto me. We will see how these powerful words can deliver us from Satan's grasp and heal our diseases. The Bible gives us many antidotes, remedies to fear. The entire Bible is written to and about God's people. The Bible is written to the Old Testament Church and the New Testament Church. The Bible is not written about or to sinners, but to believers. 1 John 4 verse 18 says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. If we are to in fear, we are not made perfect in love. In other words, our fear prevents us from receiving his love. In fear, we are calling him a liar and telling him that we do not trust him. This kind of fear is unbelief. Fear often uses torment to affect our minds and bodies, causing mental and physical disease. Medical textbooks list more than 40 diseases that result from anxiety and stress. Since scripture links fear to faithlessness, then fear must be a form of sin. This is a new thought to most people. Searching the scriptures helps us better understand what God says about fear. Revelation 21 verse 8 says, But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Fear is linked with some very serious and damaging sins in this verse. The penalty, too, is very serious. Spending eternity in the lake of fire, the second death, God takes sin seriously, and again, he lists fear as sin. Right next to murder, sorcery, idolatry, and lying, God is testing our hearts. Mankind has been on probation for 6,000 years, as God examines us to discern whether he has another Lucifer on his hands. He tests us for the kind of rebellion revealed in the hearts of of one-third of all of heaven's angels. Do we harbor any rebellion, unbelief, faithlessness, or forms of rebellion? As we lift out, live out our days, will we be God's ambassadors or leaders of another rebellion against him like Lucifer? We need a reality, a reality check right now because now is the time that our hearts are being perfected for eternity. As people saved by faith and who are on daily probation, we work out our salvation with fear and trembling. God expects us to live triumphantly in His power and for His purpose. Philippians 2.12 says, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And I'll stop right there and I'll be right back with part two.